Here are the top 7 spam dishes that you all picked for Battle of the Dishes. For 7 days, you all gave me spam recipe ideas, we put it on the wheel, and the wheel picked what we would make that day. At the end of the 7 days, you voted in the poll that I sent out. From a total of 3,397 votes, here's a compilation of your spam recipe countdown. New spam recipe. You wanna spin it? Yeah. You have to make whatever spins. No, I'm not gonna make whatever. <laughs> Go! What is it? Spam and jelly sandwich! Yeah! Total contrast to the one that we had to make yesterday. This one had very specific instructions. Their dad's recipe calls for Smucker's blueberry jam. But I don't know what the deal was at the store. Every fruit was there except for blueberry. So I just grabbed another brand. I hope it still works out. The spam had to be cooked in butter, the bread toasted. Easy enough. But how's it taste? Here it is. I'm glad today was a very simple recipe. It's 11 p.m. I have high hopes for this one. <laughs> Pretty good, <laughs> but it feels guilty. Sweet and salty combination. It's delicious. It's like a good midnight snack too. It's almost midnight. Mm. Come back tomorrow to see what the wheel has in store for us. I'm not gonna make noise this time. Red spam dessert. Spam dessert. What should we make? Your suggestions are getting wild. Doug and I were going back and forth on this. He recommended something baked or cooked. We were thinking cakes, cupcakes, donuts, even a spam apple pie. But I wanted to make life a bit easier and also to make things that maybe you'd wanna try making at home too. I was also taking into account flavors that would go well with a salty and savory spam without the spam completely taking over the dessert. So I went with brownies. But instead of lighter cake-like brownies, I went with dense and fudgy. So I chose it to be fudgy, hoping that maybe that texture would go better with the spam on top. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Weirdly enough, it works. <laughs> it's like chocolate-covered bacon, right? Yeah, it's just like a little bit of extra like savoriness, almost as if you just sprinkled more salt. And then you got like a little bit of like the spam texture, which goes well. Also, the brownies just Good. <laughs> Come back tomorrow and see what the wheel will have us make. That's pretty good. good. Let's spin to find the very first episode of the very first season of Battle of the Dishes. Doug is over there, he's watching. Ready? Sounds boring. Dude, I came up with that idea. I swear I didn't rig it. Well, thank you to so many of you who liked my idea of Spam French Toast. So I decided to make it a little more interesting by stuffing it. Okay, let's see if Spam French Toast turned out to be a good idea. Oh my God. Doug, you guys, this works. You've got the saltiness from the Spam and then you've got the sweetness from the maple syrup. That's easy and it's so good. Mm. Come back tomorrow to see the next recipe that the wheel picks. I know, I want to spam quesadilla. Please! Ready, set. Spam. We're making spam in a lumpia wrapper. Initially, I thought I'd be making Filipino lumpia and using spam as the meat. But spam doesn't have as much moisture as ground beef or pork, so I wanted to try a different recipe. I thought of mozzarella sticks, but used this salty Filipino cheese called Eden instead. While I was frying though, it dawned on me that both spam and Eden would be too salty together. But no turning back now. I'm sad there's no cheese pull, so this better be good. We both look at each other! <laughs> it is like very salty. Sweet chili sauce? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I realized while I was frying these that the Eden cheese might have made it a little bit saltier, so maybe mozzarella is better. We'll spin the wheel again tomorrow and hopefully I'll have a better recipe for you. Three, two, one. Spam sinigang! <gasps> I finally get to make the sour soup! I really hope this turns out good. I'm not sure if it will. I was nervous to try this dish because sinigang is a very nostalgic dish for me. But the wheel has spoken. This is new for me and I really hope this tastes good. Doug! Pretty dang good. <laughs> I'm like so surprised! 
surprised. Okay, not gonna, I was very resistant to trying it, but honestly, I'm a fan. It's so good. Mm, it's so nice. I've always felt like pork sinigang is really good, but it just takes a long time to soften up the pork, but you can get that shortcut with the span. <laughs> I'm gonna have some more. Okay, you can stand over there, eat it while I spin the wheel. Last spin is tomorrow. Ready? <laughs> Why'd you make that face? No! I've never made tikka masala before. Somebody, somebody suggested this. Okay, let's make it. I should have the spices. I was really intimidated by this one, but I was down for at least one challenging dish on the wheel. I just wasn't ready for it to happen so early in the series. Anyway, I used the chicken tikka masala recipe from Swasti's recipe blog. My friend told me that they had legit Indian recipes. As long as you have the spices, it's simple enough, but it does take a while to make. I had to marinate the spam for a few hours, and then make the sauce, and then put the two together. I did my best to follow it to a T because I can already see how blasphemous substituting spam in here may be. I just wanted to make sure I get at least the recipe correct, especially since it's my first time doing it. How'd I do? We did it. Honestly, it smells really good. Let's try it. I would never have put this much effort into a spam dish. Chicken tikka masala is hard enough to make, but this is actually pretty good. Oh, hey, that's good. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's spicier than I thought it would be though, but it's good. It's not that spicy for you? Okay. Mm -mm. All right, all right. Come back tomorrow. We're going to spin the wheel again, and probably nothing as difficult as this one. And here is our number one spam dish, which won by a landslide. And this is the last recipe for season one. Maybe in the future we can have more episodes, but I'll leave that up to you. Let me know what you think. Okay, let's do this. Let's see what the wheel will pick as our final recipe. <laughs> I'm excited. It's my first time making katsu, so I turned to the Just One Cookbook blog for the breading and sauce recipe. It's simpler than I thought. And like I mentioned, this is the last episode of the season. Now, you all get to vote for your favorite dish. I'll be sending out a poll in the comments, and you have a few days to make a decision. Then, we'll announce the winner in another video. This was a lot easier to make than I thought, and I know it's gonna be good. Mm. Whoever suggested this was genius. The fry on the outside is really good. 